with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to Luke, the second chapter, beginning at the 15th verse. Glory be to Christ, Christ our Savior. Savior. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing which has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child and he was called Jesus. The name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to Christ, Christ, our Lord. I speak to you now in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. You may be seated in the presence of the Most High and Living God. Just before the commencement of this service tonight, I said to my dear catechist, Uncle Dave, we are about to have a death. We are about to have a death. And he looked at me in very shock. Like, what did you hear? Who is dying? And then I said to him, do not be afraid. It is the year 2020 that is about to die. And in my mind, as I spoke to him, I consider that by the grace of God, by the mighty grace of God as I speak to you tonight, that everything that is represented would die with it. Be interred with his bones and its remains and be left bereft of any power or authority which it had over your life and my life. It is a most difficult enterprise if you have been preaching for over 30 years and you have to find something to say on every all year's night, as we like to call it. But what devil did want to say to you tonight is that in this liturgical cycle of our faith, it is the naming of Jesus Christ. Amen. The holy name of Jesus. This is what we celebrate tonight. And why I say it, is that in the midst 
of the frustrations of 2020. In the midst of all of our misunderstanding of 2020, in the midst of a COVID-19 pandemic that seems intent of ripping the very source of life and vitality away from us, in the midst of all of our doubt and our fear, whether or not a vaccine will work, in the midst of the families that have lost loved ones, millions, who have died, in the midst of all of that, the name of Jesus represents the power and the authority that we have and that we hold on to. Amen. That this name gives us the right to stand up, to stand tall and not be shaken by our circumstances or situations which have left us tittering and tottering in the year 2020. What I am trying to say to each and every one of you who are here on this service as we celebrate the holy name of Jesus, it is a name that gives you the potential for who you are. In his letter, as he writes to the church at Corinth, Paul declares these words in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. He says, if anyone is in Christ Jesus, they are a new creation. Amen. I like that translation. They are a new creation. And, and to me, what, what it says is that the old has passed away. Yes. And now, behold, the new has come. Amen. Yes. Everything that we are, everything that has ramshackled us, everything that has left us, less than human individuals uh, is now being renewed in Christ Jesus. That's your potential. I like how he puts it as he writes to the church at Philippi. He says, have this mind in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And if your mind has not been renewed. You can never be a renewed individual. Come on now, somebody to that. Yes. The mind is a battlefield. And any time you are going to lose a spiritual war, an emotional war, or a psychological war, it begins in the mind and you defeat yourself in the mind. That is where you're, you fall victim to everything around. If you think that you stop, my, I cannot get my father to sit down. I called him this morning and he's telling me, well, I went in the shower this morning. What you doing in the shower? You're not supposed to go in there, but he refuses to quit in his mind. And when we quit, when we give in, then we die. In during World War I and World War II, some of the greatest heroes 
that came out of those conflicts were those individuals who never quit in their mind, whose spirit was never broken. Because the moment that you allow yourself to be defeated, then that's the end of you. So what I want to share with you tonight is the ability to revitalize yourself as the people of God in Christ Jesus. Hello? Amen. How to revitalize yourself as the people of God in Christ Jesus. How to reinforce who you are. How to live the kind of life that nothing dampens it. How to grow strong in Christ to the word of God and by the power of his authority. So the first thing I want us to understand, my brothers and sisters, is nothing is going to happen without prayer. Oh, yes. So we have to be, as a matter of fact, the church has to be a praying church. The people of God have to be a people of prayer. Yes. We define ourselves when we zealously and we consistently pray for transformation. And every time that you face a situation or circumstances in your life, and it is not undergirded by prayer, then you're looking to fail. As a matter of fact, many people want to decide that they are going to tear down the leadership that's placed in authority over them. They decide, let's talk about the pastor. Let's tear down the pastor. And but we ought to be praying for our leadership. We ought to be praying daily for our past. See, it's a rough job on the top. You never know till you reach the top. Hallelujah, somebody. You never know till you're up there. Because you are the one that the enemy wants to bring down. So what does Jesus say? He said that men and women ought to pray rather than do what? Faith. To faint or lose heart. And the moment you stop, I, I always in my mind as a, a, a student of literature, I am always captivated by Alfred Lord Tennyson, The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. And why it captivates me is that in that piece of poetry, the ancient mariner falls upon Babla because of something, a deed that he did. And everyone on the ship is subjected to the same bad luck that he runs into. And one of the things that he says in there is that I tried to pray, but could not pray. He says, because a wicked whisper came and made my heart as dry as dust. I've had friends who've been going through some situations and they've spoken about how they try to cry out to God, but it wouldn't come. And I said, we, you have to hold on, why? It says that when we cannot pray, when because of our human condition, when because of, of who we are in our weakness, we cannot pray, it says that the Spirit comes. This is Paul oh, yes, yes. who writes to us. He says the Spirit comes and it intercedes oh, on our yes. behalf yes. with words too deep. You understand? 
God has all that. Yes. Even in the most trying of times, he intercedes for us on our behalf. And that is why we pray to God the Father through Jesus Christ the Son. There is no other name on earth that can unlock the gates of heaven. There is no other name on earth that can break the bound of what we go through as human individuals. Yes. There is no other name that we can call upon no. but the name of Jesus, Jesus. to move Amen. obstacles and stumbling blocks oh, yes. out of our way. If you want to go forward in 2021, I'm asking every one of us to become people of prayer. Mm -hmm. Let's go forward with the weapon of prayer. Let's move the things that bind us with the weapon of prayer. And let's lift up the church and our community and our world with the weapon of prayer. Amen. And so God comes and he moves on our behalf. Secondly, be a people of faith. Don't lose hope. I almost want to put a little footnote on that arm. Um, get out of social media. There's so, so much negative stuff when we read social media. And sometimes you see a little message the person said, uh, send this to 15 or 20 people. And then there's a footnote that says, well, I know you're going to send this. You'll send a joke. You'll send some bad news about someone. You'll tear somebody down on social media. But you wouldn't send this message out. But the good news is here. I, I love the readings at Christmas. The good news among all the bad news. What are you waiting for? What has happened to you in 2020 that you need to hear the good news? What has happened to you that caused you to lose your faith? And sometimes I say to individuals as a counselor, don't put yourself in harm's way. Sometimes when God is trying to move us out some situations out, yeah. we stay there. Yeah. We place ourselves in harm's way. And when we do that, remember what I've said to you? We move out of the blood circle of Jesus Christ so the devil can trouble us. He can attack our house. But if we hold faith, Amen. if we know that God is our call oh, yes. today, yes. yesterday, and tomorrow, until God comes and he takes us out of the situation. Be a people of prayer. Could I have a hymn book, please? If you have a hymn book, go to hymn number 95. Write in the CPWI, hymn 95. I want to share a verse of that hymn with you. It says that the year has gone beyond recall with all its hopes and fears, with all its bright and godly smiles, with all its mourners cares. Thy thankful people, listen, thy thankful people praise thee, Lord, for countless gifts received. And pray for what? For grace. To keep the faith with saints of old belief. If you go to the book of Hebrews and you read chapter 11 and you see the kind of suffering that the people of God went through because of their belief.
belief and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, but they have. And that is why when Paul, sorry, that is why when the author opens up the 12th chapter of his letter to the Hebrews, he said, now since we are surrounded such by such a great a cloud of witnesses, yes. let us run the race with perseverance. Yes, yes. Don't look back. In a race, you do not look back. You move forward. What is your goal? What is your aim? To get to the finish line. Oh, things will try to knock you off course and prevent you from running. For, for, prevent you from winning. But you have the victory in Jesus Christ. Keep the faith. Yes. Hold on to what you have been taught. Hold on to what you believe. And then Paul puts it at the end of that, he says, and stir up the power that is within you. Amen. This 2021, we will be revitalized as a people of faith in Christ Jesus, the Lord. Yes. Nothing can defeat you. Nothing can overturn your goals in life. Keep focus on the prize. Yes, my brothers and sisters, we may have made some slips along the way. And I want to say this, and I'm going to put a cross in it. I want to say nobody is perfect. But there's something else I need to say to you. You have been made perfect in Christ Jesus. Oh, yes. And Paul reminds us that everything that has happened in the past has gone. What Double D wants to say to you is you have to hold on to what your future is. Amen. Yeah. Go back to the woman at the well of Samaria. Go back to the fact that when God came to her, he was in even concern about her past. He was taking her into her future. Yeah, look to your future. But we must look to the future with repentance. And that is my third point. Be a people of holiness. Now one of the problems I have with us in the Anglican Church is that we walk this middle road. We believe in the middle road. It says either neither to the left or the right. So we believe, and, and that is why at times people bring us to task. I'm going to preach what I have to preach tonight. Yeah. We believe that we could do anything. Yeah. We could live anyhow. We could drink as much as we want to drink. We could run around as much as we want to run around. And it's going to be all right. Because mm -hmm. everybody sins. No one is perfect. But hasn't God saved you by grace? Yes. By grace, are you saved? Through faith. And not of yourself. So if that's the case, why is it that we choose to move in the other direction, brother road, that move in the road that says, I'm saved by grace, yes. that I have salvation, that I am now a child of God, Amen. and what was before is no more. I'm leaving that life behind. And I'm, I'm, I'm working. Listen to what the word matus, which is the Greek word for sin, what it means. You see, Paul says, I'm pressing on towards the mark. Brother mm -hmm. Miller, the word matus means to miss the mark. Hello? Mm -hmm. uh, so over here, we are missing the mark of Christ, but we want to press here. So what do we need? We need metanoia. 
Metanoia. That's another Greek word. Metanoia means to repent. It's either metanoia or paranoia. And you know what paranoia is. Yes. Now, and Landio Patsanda. But to repent means this. To be concerned about the things that you have done wrong. And then you make an attempt, a conscious attempt to change your life, to be transformed, to leave behind the old things and to move on. It ain't easy, but the sound tape was worth it. It's a hard thing because we're human. And the human part of us will always struggle against that which is spiritual. And that is why I was reading early on, uh, an author said that Christ had to come down so that he could bring us up. He had to become like us so we could become like him. He had to become human now, so his people could become divine. Don't you give in and subscribe to that what is savvy? See, the enemy always makes you and I believe that what you have now is better than what you're going to get. And if we can get that out of our mind, here's the mind again. And we can work in our hearts to be more like Christ, then you and I, my brothers and sisters, have the eternal joy of God's salvation for us. You see, people are dying every day. Yes. Oh my God. People are dying every day. When I landed on Monday evening in Nassau to go and see my father, as we were going down on the highway, the first thing I saw was a car overturned coming from the airport. And it already began to smoke. And individuals were running, trying to get the occupant out. I don't know what happened to him. But just previous to that, we had a husband and wife table died on Blake Road. Right there, off the airport, where people are dying every day. Young men that I grew up with are just falling off, heart attack. I spoke to Sister Turnquest just last week. One of her friends that I just had a conversation with died in her sleep. Friends, we are in a state where God is making a move in his world. Don't worry about who started COVID-19. God is making a move in his world. Don't worry about 2021 and whether the vaccine is going to work or the new strain that's going to come, that's coming out of England is going to kill more millions of people. We cannot worry about that. The Bible says that it is appointed unto man once to die and after death comes the judgment. You We have to be a people of holiness. Yes. Show off them old shackles that you've been carrying around. Show off the shackles of hate and shame. Show off the shackles of envy and jealousy. Show them off. 
have this attitude in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Oh, yes. It's time for God's people to be a people of holiness. Yes. If you could get there, then you could change your environment. You could change the atmosphere. You could change the stratosphere. You could change the way things are. And then you can move on. I, I had a, um, uh, whew, it gave me both pimples. I had a very strange experience today in the clinic. Um, when I went and I was talking to Adrian and she's going through a medical problem, she said, I'm hemorrhaging. And I took the chair and I sat down by her bedside and she said to me, come here. And I said, what is it? She said, God is cleaning me up. I said, what? He's cleaning me up. He's, he's taking all of this blood out so he could kill me with his blood so I could do what he needs me to do. Amen. 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 Some of you may not understand where I'm going with this and about this. But that's where it is, my brother and sister. And so, I want to close with my final point to you tonight. Be a people of power and purpose. Be a people of power and purpose. Those of you who have signed up for the mission of Christ, read your catechism. Those of you who are God's people, you are called to spread the good news. Not the priest. Every living member, every Christian, as Martin Luther, the reformist in the 16th century put it, we are the priesthood of all believers. Amen. If you sit in this church of God, you are called to action. I can't even say too many of us polishing the pews. Because now we got cushion pews. <laughs> so you're wearing the cushion out of the chain going nowhere. You're not doing anything for Christ. 
You're not up there and, and trying to encourage people for Christ. These four walls, Brother Butler, is not the church. The people are the church. Amen. If these fall and crumble or be swept away by a wave that comes from that sea, will the people of God still stand? Will you still live? Yes. Wherever you go, as they did in Acts of the Apostles, when they were under persecution, it says wherever they went, they preached the gospel. Yes, yes. Wherever they went, a church sprung up. Wherever they went, someone was saved. Yes. Wherever they went, a miracle happened. Yes. Wherever they went, there was a word of encouragement to say, brothers and sisters, you're going through some stuff, but don't worry about it. Keep moving on. Amen. God got your call. Be a people of power and purpose. Yes. If you don't have no purpose in life, you will live in, you only existing. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're only existing. So my brothers and sisters, as we seek God's favor and blessing, may we individually, one, and as a corporate body together seek to glorify God in all that we do. That's the first thing. Maybe you understand that his great commandment to love and his commission to make disciples is the gospel that is lived out by his people and proclaimed to the world. I got to pray for you tonight. It's a simple prayer. And that is, may each one of us receive God's blessing as you, and you, and you, and you, and me. Allow the Spirit of God to come and to revitalize us. Revive us again. Yes. Revive us again. I need nourishment. I need refreshment. I need to be reinforced. I need to be revitalized. I need God to be my redeemer. Revive us again. And may the gospel of God and the spirit of God wash over us. Wash over this, this, oh, yes. this place. Sir. Wash over the communities. Wash over every family in here tonight. Oh God, I'm praying yeah, tonight. Yes, yes, yes. I'm asking you tonight, Heavenly Father. I'm just asking you to come down and wash over us. And transform us into 2021. As we go forward, let us go forward in the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.